In this video, I wanna share with you the number one reason people have stopped coming to your church. So I think a lot of people would say, well, you know what, we're in a secular culture and we're being persecuted. Eh. You look at persecution globally, it's not persecution. You can say, well, it's just atheism. Atheism is on the rise. Well, a little bit, but most people are still spiritual. In fact, did you know there are 40 million Christians, people who honestly have a biblical worldview, who don't attend church in the United States. So why aren't they coming to church? Why did most churches lose 30, 40, 50% of the people who called their church home after COVID? Answer, it's not antagonism. It's not atheism. It's not persecution. Execution, you know what it is? It's indifference. It's indifference. People just kind of looked around and went, you know, not a bad church, just not great. And for some reason, I don't know, I'm just not going anymore. I'm not going anymore. That's indifference. So when they look at, you know, we could go to the mountains or we could sleep in or we could go for brunch with friends or we could go to the beach this weekend, that seems to be a more appealing option than a church that they're indifferent about. So the hardest part about indifference is that people don't hate you. Uh, they don't despise you. They're just kind of indifferent to you. They just kind of shrug it off. Now, sometimes why does indifference happen? Indifference happens often when leaders lose passion for the mission. Maybe, you know, it's pretty easy to be more passionate about attendance on a Sunday than it is about the mission that your church exists for. And maybe you've lost passion for the unchurched. Maybe you've lost passion for Sunday. Ministry is hard, I get it. But if you want to battle indifference, one of the best things you can do is rekindle your passion for ministry. Here's what's true about ministry and leadership is your church will never be more passionate passionate about the mission than you are. And listen, I understand as a leader, I've led a church for 20 years plus. There, there's a point at which, you know, your passion wanes a little bit, but it's got to get back there because if your passion for the mission isn't white hot, your people's won't be either. So when you're battling indifference, here's what the average person is thinking on a Sunday morning. Do I go to church or do I just go to the beach? Or do we just cook breakfast and hang out with friends? Like, what do we do, right? That's kind of indifference. It's not a hostility. It's just they fail to see the relevance. See, people grow indifferent to something when they don't see value. When they don't see value, if they can get what they perceive they can get from you somewhere else, they just don't see the value, and so they don't come. It's not like everyone left. It's just they don't come anymore, and that's indifference. Now, if you want to battle that, one of the best things you can do is to recapture your own passion, not for seeing people in the pews, but for the mission. If you get white hot about the mission, if you rekindle that passion, not just about, you know, this is going to be a great sermon. I don't want you to have great sermons too. But if you can get genuinely passionate about reaching people, about loving people, about being for your community, about making a difference in people's lives, about getting the gospel out there, you know what, that gets contagious. And passion is really hard to be indifferent to. I'm not talking about passionate partisanship or saying extreme things for the sake of saying extreme things. I'm talking about a genuine love for God and Jesus, a genuine love for the mission of the church, and a genuine outpouring into the community and the lives of the people that you serve. That that kind of thing becomes irresistible. So number one reason people probably aren't going to church, it's indifference. It's indifference. It's not hatred. It's not persecution. It's none of that. It's just indifference. And the way to battle that is through passion. Now, I would love to help you, um, well, solve that problem and a lot of other problems too. I've got a free church leader toolkit that I would love to get into your hands, absolutely free. It will help you assess your ministry in some critical areas and then show you how to break past some growth barriers you're facing. You can get it for free at churchleadertoolkit.com. That's churchleadertoolkit. I'd love to get that in your hands and let's get your mission beyond indifference and into the passion that it really deserves.